All right. So this is a little bit deceptive um, in that I want to refer you actually back to study guide problem number 70, where they give you a set perimeter and they say which which measurements will give you the greatest area for that set perimeter. Okay. And what I talked about in that video is that the closer you get to a, a perfect square, the length and the width being equal in measure, the greater the area you're going to have for any set perimeter. Okay, so if it said right here, of all the rectangles that have a given area, which one has the, the smallest perimeter or the least perimeter, then your answer would be a perfect square. Okay, um, assuming that it was a rectangle, which it says it's a rectangle because the circle is actually better to, to decrease the perimeter for the given area. But if it's a rectangle, we get it as close to a square as possible. But if we're saying the greatest perimeter, then the idea here is this, watch, I can, I can, let's say, split this thing into two parts and take a line, I'm going to draw a line here. Um, if I split this along this line, kind of right in the middle of it, and I'm going to take a screen grab, of, like cut out half of this. and take the other half and I'm going to like put it right next to each other okay and assume that I got that right so that it's like now this is a rectangle that is uh, got a greater width and a, and like double the width and half the height and if I did it again and I said what if I grab it like this here and then do it again and I put it right next to it. Now I have a, a rectangle that is twice as long as the one before it and half its height and I'm increasing the perimeter but I'm never actually changing the area. I'm still taking the, the, the full amount of this thing. Okay, So if I keep doing it, there's half of it. And then I do the other half. This still has the same total area, but now I've doubled the width and taken half the height. And that gives you a greater perimeter all the way around it, because um, you can imagine going backwards, getting closer to a square, it'll, it'll decrease the perimeter until you hit this point. You can't get any closer to the sides being the same, but you can get them further and further and further apart to multiply to the same given area. And you could just do that infinitely. Okay, you could take that half there, and you could take the other half from the top and splice them off and line them up next to each other. And now, again, now you can see that we've got something that's going all the way off the page, and the perimeter is getting greater and greater and greater to walk around this thing. And in fact, you can kind of think about it like this right here. It, this right here is the width of the rectangle. So you go one, or the width of the square. So you can go one, two, three, four, and you're around. One, two, three, four, and you're around. You can see how that's longer. Okay. One, two, three, four. And it's just way longer to go around this thing than it is to go around this thing. And by the way, when I go like one, two, three, four, I'm only going along one edge and I still have to go up and then all the way back and then back down. This is going to make, give you, imagine how far we could potentially, if this was getting skinnier and skinnier for a height, get longer and longer and longer and longer. And if you had to walk all the way around it, you'd have to walk all the way down before you could come all the way back. Okay. And there's no limit to cutting this in half and then doubling the width forever. And so there is not one greatest perimeter.